Hello guys, hi, how are you? So uh, today video is devoted to fluid mechanics and the topic I will be discussing today is total pressure. In fluid mechanics we learn the concept of total pressure and uh, as we all know it was introduced with Bernoulli's equation. Now for all those who know that total pressure is the sum of static pressure and dynamic pressure. Do we really understand them in physical sense? I mean, can we really illustrate to someone what total pressure is? Means how can we experience dynamic pressure or static pressure or total pressure? So in today's video, I will be explaining. So let's begin. We all know total pressure is equal to static plus dynamic now this quantity is denoted by P naught this quantity static pressure is denoted by simple P and this quantity dynamic pressure is denoted by half rho v square now most of you know that this quantity represents kinetic energy it is a formula for mathematical expression for kinetic energy now p naught is equal to p plus half rho v square now what i am trying to explain in today's video is can you tell or can we explain can we know that what this t naught is, what this p is, and what this half rho v square is, by just observing the flow of a fluid over a surface or in a duct. Consider this: there is a pipe, and this fluid is flowing from inlet one, and fluid is flowing out at inlet two. Now, according to Bernoulli's equation, P naught at 1 is equal to P naught at 2. This gives that total pressure at inlet and outlet is always same. This is also true if I took a plane or a cross section for the duct. Then, at this point, also P naught 1 will be equal to let this point be 1 dash equal to P naught 1 dash. Let this point be 1 double dash. So P naught 1 is equal to P naught 1 dash equal to P naught 1 double dash equal to P naught 2. Now we all know that this is true. Total pressure is always equal at inlet and outlet or at any point in the fluid flow. Now consider this. There is a pipe. One and two are inlet and outlet. Now we think the fluid will flow when there is a pressure difference at 1 and 2. Let pressure at 1 is P1. Pressure at 2 is P2. Fluid will only and only flow when P2 is less than P1. That means the pressure at P1 is more than P2. Then only the fluid will flow from 1 to 2. Now come to this statement. We say that total pressure is always same at 1, 2 or anywhere in the fluid flow. So how this hold true? According to this equation, fluid will never flow. So, the static and dynamic pressure play a role here. These two terms are static pressure. As you have seen, I have not introduced not in them. These terms denote static pressure difference. You could say P naught 1 is equal to 
may not know but you can't say static pressure at 1 is equal to static pressure at 2 or dynamic pressure at 1 is equal to dynamic pressure at 2 now there will be change in static and dynamic pressure but total pressure will always remain conserved so when there is pressure drop when there is pressure drop it gives us that static and dynamic pressure has been changed not the total pressure now i am going to introduce two examples this is a nozzle the function of nozzle is to accelerate the flow 1 and 2 are inlet and outlet of the nozzle other is a diffuser the function of diffuser is to decelerate the flow diffuser nozzle now consider at nozzle the flow is accelerating means the velocity of flow is increasing we know that p01 will be always equal to p02 but since the flow is accelerating p0 contains static pressure plus dynamic pressure p02 contains static pressure plus dynamic pressure at outlet so p01 contains static pressure and dynamic pressure at inlet that will be equal to p static inlet plus p dynamic inlet is equal to p static out plus p dynamic outlet so p static at inlet plus p dynamic at inlet is equal to p static at out plus p dynamic at out now p static at inlet and p dynamic at out we know that velocity is increasing dynamic pressure component includes velocity this is responsible for velocity of the flow so at outlet dynamic pressure is increased at inlet static pressure was more dynamic pressure was less at outlet static pressure has decreased dynamic pressure has increased this happens in nozzle now whereas in fluid in diffuser when the fluid flow what happened in diffuser so this was the case of nozzle now what happened in diffuser we know that in diffuser the flow will decelerate or the velocity at outlet will be less than the velocity at inlet so the static pressure at inlet plus dynamic pressure at inlet is equal to static pressure at outlet plus dynamic pressure at outlet so static pressure is less at point 1 and dynamic pressure is more now at point 2 the velocity is more so dynamic pressure component is more is less sorry I'm sorry at 2 the dynamic pressure component is less and the static pressure component is more so this is the case of diffuser right so now we get a rough idea of the two components of the total pressure now let us experience them in physical sense means how can we experience static pressure and dynamic pressure in a physical sense so I'm going to tell an experiment which everybody can perform in his or own to experience what dynamic and static pressure is. Consider you are holding a piece of paper close to your mouth, right? This is your mouth and these are the inner glands of your mouth. Now I am going to zoom this area here. So this is the paper and this is the inner glands of your mouth and this is your mouth opening. So start blowing air in this paper. First with very low velocity. 
This paper will start shaking about an axis. You will be holding it here at the tip and this paper will start oscillating about this axis. Now keep on increasing the velocity of air you are blowing. Now when you increase the velocity, this paper will start moving at higher rate. At a certain point, when you have increased velocity to a certain extent, your inner glands of the mouth will start experiencing some pain. Now why this pain is? Because you are extending or you are expanding your inner glands. So what the process is here, what the physics is here, you are expanding total energy in two components. One is expanding your inner glands and what that expansion of your inner gland provide, that provide velocity to the flow which is making this paper oscillate about an axis at an velocity. So the pain you are experiencing in your inner glands of the mouth is due to the static pressure and this paper is flowing or oscillating about an axis due to dynamic pressure. So total pressure is sum of static plus dynamic. The static pressure you can experience it, the pain you are experiencing on the inner glands and dynamic pressure is the cause of this movement of paper. So now from this we can draw a conclusion that static pressure is experienced at the wall of the surface and dynamic pressure is experienced by observing the fluid flow. So consider this is a pipe. This is a pipe and at 1 and 2 are the inlet and outlet of the pipe. So this pipe will experience some pressure at the walls. This pressure is the static pressure component. And the flow is there in the pipe, the fluid flow is there due to dynamic pressure. Together the sum of these will give us total pressure. So the static pressure is always experienced at the wall, dynamic pressure is observed by the fluid flow and total pressure is the sum of all these. Static and dynamic pressure will vary along with the flow, total pressure will always remain conserved. This is the physical sense or the physics behind the total pressure. I hope this makes sense. Now the next big question is how to measure the static pressure or dynamic pressure. So for this, I